Dear friends, this is an extremely interesting topic. The sacrum forms the posterior segment of the pelvic ring through the sacroiliac joints. Forces transmitted through the lumbosacral articulation into the upper sacrum propagate laterally across the SI joints to the pelvis. Hence, the sacrum has been described as the keystone of the pelvic ring because of these load transferring and load sharing properties. It is a transitional zone between the mobile lumbar spine and the stiff pelvis. The LS uh, junction is a very uh, challenging area because of uh, high rates of failure of fixation in this area because of poor bone quality in the cancellous sacrum. Patients have osteoporosis who need this kind of surgery here. Uh, because of the complex regional anatomy, high level of transitional stress in this uh, area. So that's why there is a high rate of pseudarthrosis, high rates of implant breakage and failure. So, there are three zones of opportunities to put your screws here. The first, first is the S1 body, the second is the S2 to the tip of the coccyx and the third is the ileum. So, they, these are the various opportunities here. Now, the commonest spinopelvic fixation is in zone 1, that is the S1 screw that we use uh, day in and day out. Usually, we use the bicortical screws. This is good as long as the sacral uh, bone quality is good, the bone density is good. Otherwise, it is a day one failure. So, either you put a bicortical screw or a, a ailer screw in a divergent direction. But the best, in my experience, the tricortical screw, which has never failed me. This is a useless uh, zone of fixation because the purchase in S2 and S3 is uh, of no importance. When we talk of spinopelvic fixation, we are basically talking about fixation in the ileum. Because this provides a big platform, a high, big area of uh, big canvas to put your screws in. You can put screws which are close to 10 centimeter in length. It is mainly cortical in nature and it can take big diameter screws and it generally never fails you. The advantage is that you can put the screws beyond the pivot point. The pivot point is what is uh, is a very important strategic point that the concept of which uh, you need to understand. This is basically located at uh, the annulus posterior at the L5-S1 exactly in the center. And this was highlighted by McCord long back. Uh, any fixation which can neutralize the forces of flexion and extension at the lumbosacral junction should be beyond this particular point. So that is where... Uh, the iliac screws, the sacro uh, S2 iliac screws, uh, that is where they succeed. Uh, so, <clears throat> this is very important to uh, to neutralize the uh, uh, you know flexion extend forces uh, in the uh, lumbosacral uh, junction. So, this was the seeds were sown long back by Galveston. Uh, in place of screws, uh, Galveston rods. <coughs> uh, uh, were basically cylindrical rods. These were devised by Allen and Ferguson. But the concept was the same. Uh, though these uh, Galveston screws uh, uh, paved the path for uh, the Zilliac screws, they were very weak because of the nature of the, uh, the rods, which were cylindrical and smooth. So they are not very strong in flexion, extension and rotation. So they failed. That is when uh, these screws were devised by Vidal. You basically knock off the PSIS and aim your screws towards the greater trochanter or the ASIS to gain purchase in the acetabular roof, which has a strong uh, uh, zone of purchase. It is highly cortical in that particular area. So the screws are usually uh, usually could the screws could usually uh, uh, you know uh, range from 7.5 uh, uh, to 10 centimeters, and uh, the diameter could be somewhere between. Uh, 6.5 to 10 millimeters and you screw you pass the screw through this teardrop uh, which you can achieve uh, you know uh, uh, by organizing your siam in an oblique fashion so this pedic this teardrop is called the iliac pedicle so there are various advantages of these long uh, iliac screws. It helps in correcting pelvic deformity. It's invaluable in revision surgery. Does not violate the SI joint. Most importantly, uh, the difficulties would be you know exposure may be difficult in an obese patient. <laughs> Prominence of hardware can be avoided by burying the screw lower down. That's why you knock off the PSIS. There is a certain percentage of neurological injury, but I've never seen that happening in my experience. And we definitely need well-developed iliac wings, which may be a problem in kids with neuromuscular scoliosis. It's recommended that the patient's spine, hip and pelvis is in extension so that you know the, <coughs> the fixation is such that the patient can stand properly. Uh, the 
revolution has been the S2 Elex screws, which uh, I have the advantage of being in line with the S1 screws, so you don't have a need to use an additional connector. They are not prominent because they are buried down, and they are not very offset from the uh, the main uh, rod, and they are as good as the Elex screws. Uh, this is these are the landmarks. So. Uh, the midpoint of the line connecting the lateral edge of the S1 and S2 foramen is the point where you start uh, making your trajectory, which is 20 to 30 degrees caudal and 40 degrees to the uh, horizontal plane. Now, let's go through some indications. Uh, the foremost and most common indication in my experience is limitation or absence of anchor, anchorage of points of fixation uh, across the lumbosacral junction. This is usually seen in lumbosacral infection where you know, the upper half of S1 is eaten away. So, this is one of our case reports which we published. So, this patient had S1 tuberculosis where the S1 uh, vertebral body had totally vanished and we are uh, looking for point of fixation. That's when we put these iliac screws and connected them to the L5 screw and filled with this vacuum with the aloe graft and you beautifully filled up in uh, the next one year and uh, gave a solid fusion. Second would be pelvic obliquity. This is very common in neuromuscular scoliosis who suffer from loss of you know, sitting balance. So, this the goal is here is to achieve a stable pelvis like in this particular patient. Again, in long deformities, especially adult spinal deformities, this is basically to minimize the rate of pseudarthrosis, implant breakage to enhance the chance of fusion. And uh, this was a very well done uh, uh, adult degenerative uh, kyphoscoliosis. Uh, by uh, someone else, uh, you know, over a period of time, the S1 screw loosened and the implant failed and, the uh, you know, the patient was immobile because of the pain. Uh, so, we supplanted another two rods on each side and uh, using only dominoes and connected it to the pelvis and the patient was mobile. So, so it's a very uh, powerful device. So, again, lumbosacral tumors basically uh, as a palliative measure to optimize fixation and stability uh, uh, in such cases. You can see here there is significant involvement of multiple levels and S1 vertebral body is also involved. So, this is basically to involve, uh, to, you know, uh, uh, bypass these involved levels so as to give stability to the spine, uh, to manage pain and to mobilize the patient. And again, in high-grade list, this is, this is basically to protect the S1 uh, pedicle screws because there's high stress on the S1 pedicle screws. For example, this particular patient with a big, uh, the long-standing L5 S1 lytic list, this is with a big void in the front involving the lower half of L5 and upper half of S1 <laughs> where we did the lumbopelvic fixation. Again, sacral trauma, which is, uh, uh, this is the only way one can mobilize these patients. Uh, the trauma is in different planes. This is a U-shaped fracture of the S S1. The only way we can stabilize this is by doing a lumbopelvic fixation as shown here. The, uh, this kind of fixation can nowadays be done using minimal access, which is a boon in uh, obese patients. So, uh, spinopelvic fixation has unlimited indications. Uh, fixation across the lumbosacral junction is a big challenge. When in doubt, go to pelvis. So, Elex screws, S2 Elex screws, multiple rod constructs uh, provide significantly rigid uh, biomechanical stability, enhancing fusion, minimizing pseudarthrosis, minimizing failure rate, minimizing thus the revision rates. So, the latest advances are, you know, in doing this particular procedure using MIS. So, this particular technique is a necessary arrow in the spine cure of every spine surgeon. Thank you.